Hey guys, DJ Ravine here and I'm here with Danny Linton, one of our lecturers at Point Blank Music School. And today we're gonna to be going through some advanced drum mixing techniques. And is this something that people would learn if they come to Point Blank? For me, this is really one of the top things that I'll show students uh, in which they'll, they'll really um, take a lot from this and you know, it'll take them from having drums that are cool and maybe have a nice groove to you know, sounding like the real deal and you know, professional, exciting drums. Awesome, let's, uh, let's have a listen. This is after processing, right? Or uh, before processing? No, this is before okay, processing. Cool. So, uh, you know, there's, there's minimal amounts of sort of mixing done here. There's, there's a few things to sort of enhance the individual tracks, you know, a bit of EQ here and there, but, but even then, not too much. What I find is like the, the, the most sort of impactful things that you'll do in the mix will be on these sort of group channels. So, for example, the drums as a whole, rather than kind of, you know, compressing and EQing things individually. So, so more, more about the bus? Yes, exactly that, yeah. So this will be the drum bus. So, um, as an example, I'll just show you, um, and I'll bring this in as it's playing these uh, parallels. Parallel is basically, so it's, it's a sort of notion of taking this, this one signal here, this dry signal, and then mixing it in parallel with, with an affected version of it. So imagine you've got um, A here, which is the dry version, and then B, which is the parallel, which is the mega compressed version, which I've set up here. So essentially, all of these individual drum parts, which are, the, there's five, so it's, there's not too many, uh, kick, snare, hi-hat, hi-hat loop, and a tambourine, they're all being fed into this drum bus, which in turn is being fed and copied out into other channels. So, um, yeah, let me just play it through and I'll, I'll just try and solo each, each part. So the first thing I've done was send it to bus five here. Which is probably the most apparent thing. And if I just play that in isolation, that's just a version of the drums that is like just seriously compressed. And this particular, this doesn't really matter what plugin you're using here, but um, for instance, I've used um, this compressor on in guitar rig here. So um, that sounds like that in isolation. Mega compressed, mega energetic, something nice about it, but also you, you'd want to tame that and not have so much of that. So the idea is, on this send, this is incredibly important, this is set to pre-fade. The reason being is that'll go directly from um, this fader here as opposed to this, this channel fader here. The reason being you can sort of make a mix and blend of the, the sort of the dry signal, if you like, and the affected signal. So let me just do that now. So there's the affected signal. There's a the dry. You have like quite extreme effects to, to sort of more subtle degrees, if that makes sense. Uh, so the, the, I've got another one. You don't have to just stop there. I've got like a, like a crispy uh, version of it. Technical term there. This is just a mega processed version of it. And here's a final one. So what I wanted to do rather than just sort of showing you that now is actually we can build something up from scratch and you can show you can approach us in different ways and maybe show you're going to make this a bit more creative and exciting rather than just static we can actually have some of these faders moving and automating up and down and doing interesting things. And of course you can use this with any genre. Absolutely yeah, yeah most definitely. Um, it's, to me it lends itself well to uh, maybe sort of more underground styles of techno and garage and stuff like that. If it, 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 it's a very, you can get quite a sort of analog sort of sound out of it, broadly speaking, but absolutely any genre could do this, yeah. Right, okay, so we've got like a blank slate here. We're, we're back to square one. Again, just a reminder, we've got our five drum uh, parts. Cool, they're all doing the thing, and I've already grouped these together. Um, I'm, I'm a bit old school, I do it the manual way, so what I'd normally do is just 
select these channels and take that output and put them all in a, a single bus there. So they're all arriving here, drums. Yeah, a little bit of compression on the channel as well, not too much. But we're going to talk about this, this concept that I mentioned before, parallels. Um, and I'm going to show you how to set this up within Logic. But again, this is applicable to any DAW. So first things first, I go to the sends of the channel. Uh, let's go to bus 5. Now, a, quite a nifty little shortcut here is just if you hold down Alt and you click, you get um, sort of uh, uh, 0 dB sent out, basically. It'll just, whatever's coming in, the exact same will be sent out as well, which is quite useful. And rather than just kind of, you know, picking this up and, and trying to fiddle around with that, you can just hit Alt and click. Now, the second important step, something I mentioned before, is making this actually pre-fade. Now let me just show you what's going on. I can bring this channel down, this drums channel. And we, we still hear the track via this, this channel here. So basically we've just, we've made a parallel. We've got two copies of the same thing. If you imagine we've got A and we've got B there. Now at the minute there would have been no much, not much point of doing that. It's only, it's only significant when we actually start processing this. In a, in a different way to the, the way this is processed. So let's just bring that channel down. Um, now th th this is, there's no rules, particularly with this. What I find is maybe a blend of um, something that's like EQ'd a lot, a blend of something that's sort of heavily compressed, and maybe something that has some sort of modulation on it. There's no real rules. So you kind of take the best out of every single that's, one? That's the idea, yeah, yeah. You, what, what we'll end up with is maybe like four or five tracks that all have different sort of qualities to them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we can kind of blend them together and create this nice uh, mix of, right. of, of all, all of the app. Uh, right, because when I, when I normally mix drums, mm. it's basically just, that's it, you know, that's all I've done so far. Right. I've just you know, adjusted the levels on each one. Yeah. Maybe the kick, you put a compressor on it and then you EQ everything a little bit and then yeah. I'd leave it at that. Well, that, you know, and that, that can be absolutely fine. But for me, the, like electronic music is really it built around, you know, great sounding full drums. So for me, it's, um, it's, it's, if the drums aren't really full and exciting, I'll, I'll, I'll be less inclined to even add anything else to it. So this is about really creating very rhythm-focused, drum-focused music. It really lends itself well to that. So let's continue. We have this first sort of parallel, as I'll refer to it now. So I'm just going to call it, I'll just call it like A for now, just so we know where we are. And, you know, the, the, like I say, there's no particular rules to this. One thing I might want to do is, guitar rig is particularly good for this, but I don't want to particularly endorse any one plugin. Like I say, this can be done with anything. From here, I would then maybe go to some of the effects. Uh, maybe even, let's just tr try searching for compression. Heavy compression, that sounds good to me. So like I say, this is the most kind of standard thing you'll see with, within this technique. So we've got this like really heavy compression. There might be some elements I'm not really keen about that, like I can hear that there's reverb on that, so I, I'm not really too fussed about that, so I think it's coming from this device. So look, this, it's, it's clearly too overly processed, that, but there's something nice about it at the same time. It's very crunchy. Very crunchy, yeah. Well, look, cool. Let's call it crunchy. You can be as explicit as that. That's the, the crunchiness of the, of the track. Okay, so let's play it and bring back in this dry signal. Or let's go the other way, let's start with the dry signal and then actually increase the, the crunchiness. You can hear it, it adds like a, another layer to it. It sounds like that's, you've added more drums. That's, that's exactly it. So the, the idea is you can have, you know, some people listen to records and, and they'll be like, why does it sound great when it, there's only like three parts there? It's because there's things like this going on. They've, they've, they've really been layered and, you know, filling, filling in the gaps between, between what's happening. Uh, so let, let's go pre-fade. Again, we've got this channel here. Let's just solo it. 
Um, what should we do this time? Let's go for something that lives inside a logic, maybe this step effects here. And really it's 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 potluck a lot of times. Do you know what I mean? I'll just I'll just play it and see if I like it and then try and blend it in. As simple as that. So look, that's clearly something a bit more uh, on the creative end as opposed to mixing, but things like that can work as well. So let's try it in context. Cool, and I'm just gonna try a few more things. Inevitably, you know, not everything works, but if you try long enough, you'll, you'll get a nice combination of things. Here's one particular thing that I like to use. Is, this is the, um, the reverb unit space designer, which is a convolution reverb. And within here, if you explore some of the, the, the patches here, you can actually go into so wait, what's, what's a convolution reverb as opposed to like a, a regular reverb? Right, so this is a reverb that's been obtained by someone's actually went into an actual space, excited the space with like maybe like a starter pistol or something or, or a loud bang or a loud clap and they've captured that and you can sort of impose this, um, this is where my knowledge about it starts to break down a little bit, but you can essentially make a sound sound like it's been in that space in, in this sort of digital domain here. Yeah, so... Um, Let's go to Warped Effects. Um, and this particular one here, Drone Tones, is quite cool. So listen, I'll just play this in isolation just to show you what it sounds like. This is for particularly for those who, who struggle with sort of melodic ideas. I, I find this, they can get melodies from the drums. So let's have a look. Now that's cool. I like that, but but this, it has it's it's a little bit too muffled and boomy for me. So there's nothing stopping you from actually chaining the, these effects and actually putting more than one effect on each each copy if you like. So I'm just gonna sort of brighten that up a bit. It sounds like a synth part. Essentially, it is. That 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 sample there is just a, a synth tone but it's, it's making the, the, the drums are triggering it. And look, if you want it a bit more percussive as well. Now look at it in context. Let's do one more. That already sounds amazing. It sounds yeah. completely different from what it was at the beginning. That's it. We'll, we'll, when we're finished, we'll, uh, we'll take everything off and we'll, we'll build it up again. So like, this is the final one I'll do. And um, again, no particular endorsements, but um, I'm a particular fan of Molecular instead of Reactor. Again, this is gonna be more for kind of like craziness and, and movement and modulation. It's um, very creative yes, mix, remixing and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. You wouldn't want to do this on, on every track, you know. Even though I do. <laughs> cool. So, look. Lovely. And again, it's, you're not too bothered about finely tuning this. It's, to me, it's all about just zip through. Whatever works, works. So there's the drums through it. That's, that's quite extreme. Like even within here, you can you can be a bit more refined about what you're actually looking for. So let's actually go into this embedded link here, and let's say, okay, maybe something rhythmical. Look, there's a nice little sort of stereo effect going on there. It's kind of like a stereo fill. Exactly that. Yeah. Now look in context with the rest.
Cool, and then there's, there's sort of one final part of this for me, and, and that's, that's making this dynamic. So rather than it just static, you can actually build these, these things up. So one thing I'm thinking here just off the fly is, is if we right click on this, we can actually create the channel. Just a reminder, this is the version of the drums that sounds like this. So rather than just starting with that, we can actually blend that in. So let's right click, create track. And here we go. Caravan is probably the name of the um, patch or the preset there. And look, we can just enable our, our um, automation and just sort of bring this in over time. This is, this is whatever you want to do if you want to blend it in slowly. So the, the point being, these things are dynamic. These things can actually move if you want. You know, for, for the, the, the last example there, that kind of, that, that panning example, mm. again, right click, create track. Yeah, that's a great example because that one was doing it on every every four beats yes. before, and then you can make it do it on every eighth, like you yes, just done it exactly. there. Exactly, so you can kind of withhold some things back so they're not you know a bit jarring and, and constant. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite interesting how versatile this technique is because obviously here we've done a much more creative thing than in the first one. The first one was more about mixing, getting those drums analog sounding, yes. and getting the drums sounding fat, but here. I mean, you've basically just created, it almost, it almost sounds like a full song now. Well, that's, that's kind of, you can sort of go a bit OTT with it yeah. to the point where you've, you've left not, not a room for anything else. But, you know, if, if, if you want that, 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 that's cool to have that option, isn't it, really? You know, making as much out of a, as little uh, as possible, really, is, is like a sort of a, a good approach. Yeah, it's quite a nice um, minimalistic approach to creating music as well. Yes. And this is great because I'm going to take this home and I'm going to start trying some experimentation with this just with maybe like five, six drum yeah. tracks and seeing the most that I can exactly. make out of it. Out of the, the few, yeah, set yourself a challenge. Maybe just go, okay, I'm going to have five parts. What can I do with it? You know what I mean? In terms of these sends and these parallels to make it as much as it, it possibly can be. And like I say, it doesn't have to be boring and static. These things can come in and out. Okay, so this is our finished product here. It sounds like a completely different track. Sounds better. Yeah, hopefully. definitely. <laughs> All right, hope you all enjoyed that. That was just a couple little advanced drum mixing techniques, but not so much even just mixing. I mean, you can use this creatively as we've just done. Absolutely. And uh, that's all from us today. Make sure you check out pointblankmusicschool.com to find out more about what we teach here at Point Blank. What do you teach personally at Point Blank? Um, I teach uh, number of modules. I teach uh, production portfolio, which is a, the final module, the uh, major project. And sometimes I do the, the more introductory ones, uh, ITP introduction to music production and various other ones. So definitely come join us. Maybe we'll get Danny as one of your lecturers. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.